92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and soon to be audio and video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott's back in the studio again. Hey, Scott, welcome. Good morning, Tom. You found your coffee cup back there. You're all set. I did, after the big holiday. All set, ready to go, right? Yes, sir. All right. Doc Talk Radio from Woodlawn Hospital. Dr. Eric Seward, OBGYN, joins us. Dr. Seward, good morning. Good morning. Good Thanksgiving for you? Oh, it was an excellent Thanksgiving. Uh, I just drove back in a Penske moving truck from Santa Fe, New Mexico, so <laughs> that's an experience that I want to forget, but, but won't uh, anytime soon. Uh, but I had an awesome week with my, my family. Um, you know, we've been kind of spread out across the country, and, and we're working on fixing that, but it's, uh, it's a process. It takes a little time, doesn't it? Yes. And you brought some things back. I bet that is a long, pretty, we, you and I were talking about kind of before we went on, but that's 20 plus hours of uh, driving in a moving truck. It, it is. And I think it was a solid two hours more than it, it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, nice to have you with us today. Thank you. General Obstetrics. Yeah, I wanted to, to this is one of my passions and, and literally half of my title, OBGYN. The OB stands for obstetrics. And, and what that refers to basically is Pregnancy, all things pregnancy related. I thought we would, you know, kick off today discussing general obstetrics, how we normally go about doing things, um, what things we're keyed in on and focused okay. in on, and how we can safely guide people through pregnancy and, and what we're trying to accomplish with, with the things that we're doing. All right, let's do that. Um, one of the you know first things I like to point out is that if you look back uh, in the last hundred years, among the greater uh, benefits or the greater accomplishments of, of medicine, we look at clean water, we look at vaccinations, we look at uh, some of the uh, great improvements in anesthesia. But uh, one of the amazing things that's happened is the the work that's been done in both the care of mothers as they deliver children, uh, the care of those children, um, getting kids past that very uh, fragile first few days of life. Um, and now the work has almost uh, more focused on uh, getting the preterm deliveries, both decreased in numbers, but also uh, the the science, the good work that our pediatricians do and our NICU specialists do to uh, keep some of our preterm babies uh, alive and thriving. And, and it's, it's been an amazing process. Uh, we, we hear a lot about things that that need to be improved in medicine, but if you just sort of look back at the amazing improvements and and the life expectancy, one of the greatest pieces of that is is getting rid of of, of childhood and birth injury, trauma, and death, uh, which is something that we're working hard on. Almost uh, almost like taking a wellness approach to to pre pregnancy. Well, there, there certainly is uh, that, and uh, you know, I would start out with. Um, we, we like to talk about the preconceptual time, um, and this is before, really before a person gets pregnant, and certainly before they come in and see me. I usually don't have access to people before they get pregnant, unless it just happens to be somebody I know or one of my patients. Right. I'm usually getting involved um, after we're already knee-deep into the thing. Um, but one of the things that we like to, to see people do is get on prenatal vitamins, get on folic acid to look at their general health. Um, I oftentimes say that if something's healthy for you when you're not pregnant, it probably is healthy for you when you are and vice versa. So we like to see people uh, quit smoking. We like to see people not drink alcohol. We like to see people get out and exercise. We like to see people eat healthy. Uh, we like to, to see people work on any health, known health problems they may have, whether it be blood pressure, diabetes, et cetera, um, and try to have those things in as firm control as possible when, when they actually do get pregnant. Okay. Um, so that's that's one of the the first issues that we uh, are faced with. Some of the critical, if you if you think about what happens with pregnancy, um, a 
baby is literally forming. The, the, the parts are growing. The pieces are coming together around week five or six, seven. You know, that's usually within a week or two or three of the uh, conception. We don't usually see people that early. Uh, sometimes we do, but, but most of the time... It's, it's after that. So a lot of these early, early problems that could arise uh, can be prevented by, by thinking about things before they even happen. Um, and we like it. We love it. Um, we, we realize, I'm a realist, I know that, sure. that um, one of my favorite, we used to get disability forms uh, for, for maternity leave, and the very first question on there was, this an accident? <laughs> and, and I, that's too much information. I don't know. I don't ask. <laughs> but we know that a, a big chunk of the time it is. <laughs> but uh, when you do have foresight, it certainly helps. Um, now, the way that we deal with prenatal care, and this is sort of, uh, it's it's organized in a, a specific way to try to take care of specific needs. Um, we usually have a, a block of visits that we see people, an initial visit where we do a lot of the initial work to get things started. We usually see people every four weeks up until they're about 28 weeks along, okay. every two weeks until they're about 36 weeks, and then every week until it's baby time. Um, on average, that's about 13 visits that people come in and see me. And this is part of why I love my job. I really get an OP. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's no primary care sure. um, issue out there that, that gets to see a patient that often. And, you know, if you have a patient that sees that has two or three babies over the course of five six years um, between you know normal annual visits postpartum visits and all those prenatal visits you get to see a, a person dozens of times really exciting for me um, so what we like if we can is we like to get people in to the office as as soon as they realize that they're pregnant we like to have people call in. We're usually aiming to get them in sometime around seven, eight weeks, um, certainly by 10 weeks if we can. Part of the reason for that is we want to identify any problems that we can as early as possible so that hopefully we can fix things that might need to be fixed or address things that might need to be addressed. Or certainly watch those problems as they proceed through the pregnancy. Sure. And, and anything that, that can be avoided, we right. like to do. <laughs> the other reason that it's good to get people in early is to uh, get our dates really um, solid. I mentioned weeks a, a few minutes ago, and uh, most uh, aunts and neighbors and grandmas out there are going to talk in terms of months. Everybody knows that pregnancy is nine months. When we say weeks, a lot of times it's, it's like doing algebra to figure it out. <laughs> but there are about nine weeks and every two months and and it actually works out pretty right. close to nine months when you when you figure it out from a a perfect last menstrual period dating now not everything always works out to be perfect so most of the time we are confirming or setting our dates based on a, an early ultrasound we like to do that sometime you can really start to do that around six weeks um, and any time before 10 weeks, you get very accurate dating. Um, I like to point out if, if you took every baby that's born on their due date, uh, there aren't that many that are born right on their due date, <laughs> but when say, they, if you took a, a sample often. of just those born on their due date, you would get a few <laughs> six pound babies and some eight pound babies and a few 10 pound babies, probably about a five pound spread for, for you know, 95 five percent of of all babies um you bring those guys all back when they're 40 years old and, and some of them are going to be 80 pounds and some <laughs> are going to be 400 pounds that spread sure. diverges and the same thing's true between a, a baby that's that's you know five six seven weeks the size of a lima bean and a, a baby at term that has a five pound spread right uh, so the earlier you can get that dating the more accurate you can set that that those dates and that sort of helps us in a lot of ways later on we need to know at least reasonably accurately when a baby's due so that we know when to intervene to keep somebody pregnant when to intervene to make somebody not be pregnant and and so forth and so on and so that's one of the most important early pieces we do a lot of blood work um, I, I know I think every every pregnant patient walks in and they're, they're like, you know, hang their head. Oh, my gosh, they're going to draw, you know, a gallon of blood. It's, it's blood not quite they. that bad. It's usually a couple of vials. But what we're testing for with that 
um, is a number of very important things. We're looking for blood type. Uh, one of the problems that we can run into is, is uh, sensitization of, of uh, moms to fetal blood if there's a, a, a an RH differential or if there's another antibody to the blood uh, floating around in mom's bloodstream and this is something that's a, a preventative step to help moms with future pregnancies. Uh, we test for a number of the infections that can affect pregnancy. Uh, there are a, a, a whole bunch of things. Some are, are relatively passive. Some are things that we can immunize against and we're testing also for to see whether or not people have still have passive immunization for things like rubella that can indeed infect um, uh, babies and cause some some birth defects and problems uh, so the earlier we can get all that information the better there's some infectious disease some of the uh, sexually transmitted diseases hepatitis things like that can affect both maternal and fetal health um, there's a lot you can tell from drawing the blood then oh yeah yeah and there's there's a, a panel of probably about 15 things and I, I haven't counted them all but right. there's a, a whole big list of things that we get from that and it's, it's just good information. Doctor I hate to mention this but what about narcotics? Well, we're not, we, we do sometimes, um, and, and this is sort of a provider to provider and a location to location um, discussion. There are drug screens that sometimes get done. We would, obviously in a perfect world, we would prefer that nobody be using any illicit medicine or, or even prescription medicines. Um, it's a problem that we're seeing more and more. And this is a topic that maybe one of these days okay. we can take up as a, a, a whole thing unto itself. But narcotics uh, from, you know, simple prescription medicines uh, all the way up to heroin are, are becoming, and some of the other blocking and treatment, uh, suboxone and methadone and things like right. that, are ubiquitous um, across the United States. There were problems for me in New Mexico. There are problems right here in Rochester, Indiana. Um, we are seeing more and more regulation of those medicines, and, and for good reasons. Um, they do affect babies. Babies uh, essentially get addicted to those medicines, and moms that are addicted, they have to go through withdrawal when they're when they're born. It's it's never a simple thing. Right. Uh, they have a, a shakier, tougher time. Uh, ultimately, we. We will be getting more information as the years go by, but this is going to affect just about every aspect of a, a young child growing up and, and not just the home life that they're subject to, but some of those those rough beginnings. Uh, so I think, you know, and our pediatricians are, are doing a wonderful job. We're learning every day and we're, we're trying to work in concert with some of our bigger medical centers to try to give the best care we can to the folks that come in with narcotics okay. issues. But that is something that, that and again, it, it's it's a, a trending thing at the moment that we test for. And some places are doing it only if there's suspicion. Some places are doing it as a matter of course. Um, and it is a little bit region to region and, and physician to physician. Okay. Um, then through the middle part of the, the pregnancy, we have some, there's a few really exciting tests that are out now. There's a thing called a free fetal cell DNA test. Um, it used to be that if somebody had a risk for, say, Down syndrome, and, and we would have a, a lengthy discussion about what can you do, is it worth doing anything to assess uh, that and I'll, I'll give you an example if somebody's 20 years old they get pregnant they have a risk of roughly 1 in 12 to 1400 of having a Down syndrome just purely based on their age if they're 28 that risk is about 1 in is about one in uh, 800. If they're 35, it's about one in 300. If they're 48, it's about one in 12. It's a, it's a, a slightly logarithmic, uh, certainly a linear or more uh, increase in risk as you get older. So we used to use um, 35 as sort of the advanced maternal age cutoff with the idea that at that point in time, it was a, a, a reasonable thing to do an amniocentesis, put a needle in, draw some fluid out, culture for the karyotype, look for the, the actual um, chromosomes, count them up. Um, it's, it, it, it sounds like a, uh, it's almost like a cut and paste thing that a, a first or second grader would do, but they get these pictures and they go through and they match them up. And, and, and ultimately, if there's an extra one, they say, ah, we've got an extra 21. And, and that's how we used to make that diagnosis. With these newer tests, not only 
can you find out about Down syndrome, but you do it without an invasive test. Uh, you draw some blood from mom. I suppose that's invasive to mom, but it's not as as invasive as an sure. amnio was. Um, you you can then culture for uh, any bit of DNA that belongs to the baby. And there's there's some amazing technology that goes into that. And you can see not just Down syndrome and some of the major trisomies, but you can also see some deletions. You can see um, sex chromosomes. You can find out if it's boy or girl. But even more important than that, you can find out whether or not there might be extra or missing bits or whole chromosomes. And there's a, a list right now, and it's growing, of you know, probably about 10 or 12 things that can be tested for just from drawing some blood from mom. And usually we're doing those tests around uh, between 10 and, and 14, 15 weeks. Um, from 15 to 20 weeks, we have a different test called a quad screen. And sometimes we can do this in concert with ultrasound and, and some of these other blood works. And you can get a really comprehensive idea of, of what problems there might might exist there we're not doing this for everybody just because it's cost prohibitive right now it's still focused on people that have risks uh, but really exciting stuff and, and really interesting reports and uh, it most of the time makes us feel good about normal things sure. and um, rarely it, it, it focus, uh, focuses us in on something that might be a problem. Um, but that's that's uh, sort of the, as we get into that second trimester, that um, 10, 12 weeks and beyond, uh, we also usually do our big ultrasound, our anatomy ultrasound, um, somewhere around 18 to 20 weeks, uh, about the halfway point. That's when you can really see your little lima bean has grown arms and legs, and, and it starts to look like a, a baby, slightly alien-like. But That's the picture you look forward to. That is. That's the one where usually people, they, all they care, there's one bit of anatomy they care about usually. Yes, <laughs> and, that's and, right. And, it, it, and we're all focused on, you know, the chambers of the heart, sure. the, the kidneys and, and bladder and whatnot, and the brain, um, the ventricles in the head. but. Everybody wants to know whether it's a he or a she, um, but that's 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 a usually around the mid part of pregnancy. It also helps determine if we're growing uh, appropriately, and and it sets the course for later on, oftentimes. And then as we get closer and closer to the end, it, it starts to get more serious. It's usually not till about that halfway point that people start to feel and look pregnant, that they start to feel the baby move, uh, that some of the, you know, the, the Hollywood signs, if you will, of, of pregnancy, <laughs> the, the, the things that you see the in, bumps. The, in the, yeah, the baby bump and all that, um, that all of those things start to appear at about that halfway point, and um, and then from there on out, it it becomes more of the pregnancy that we all associate with. Um, so as we get closer to the end, we usually at 28 weeks or so, beginning a third trimester, do a diabetic screen. Sometimes we do it a little bit earlier if there's any any cause for suspicion. Um, we test uh, blood count because anemia is a problem oftentimes in pregnancy. Sometimes we're doing blood tests to follow up on things that we may have done earlier, like thyroid testing, et cetera, uh, during that time. And then as we get down the stretch, it starts to become uh, discussion points about when to come to the hospital. You know, but, you know, I, I oftentimes uh, preface it by don't get speeding tickets or, <laughs> or get into car crashes. It's never worth that. But um, ultimately, you know, we start talking about the strategy of, of eviction, <laughs> if you will, getting that baby out sure. and, and getting in all of the, the, the details that kind of go into that. Um, and that's, you know, I think as you get closer, those things get more real and they get they, they kind of pile on. One of the last tests that we do is a culture for a thing called beta strep. Uh, strep, everybody's heard of strep throat. Strep throat is a, a, a an infection of the throat caused by a bacteria called streptococcus. There are different uh, categories of strep. Um, there are alpha strains of strep and beta strains. Alpha strains, I, I usually use the idea of dogs as sort of my example. Everybody, if I say dog, people have an, ex an idea. They either picture a poodle or a pit bull or, or something in between. Well, alpha strains are the pit bulls and the Dobermans. They're the ones that, <laughs> that cause problems. You know, they, they're the ones that, that give you a sore throat or, 
or a skin rash or or other you know flesh eating um, those kinds of problems uh, whereas beta strains tend to be the poodles and the you know the chihuahuas they don't they don't do much uh, usually they kind of sit there and are, are sort of incognito in our skin about 75 80 percent of people have it somewhere nose ear somewhere um, about one in every three or four women have it somewhere around the birth canal. Never causes a problem. You'd never know you had it. It's not something you can predict uh, based on anything at all other than um, you can do it once in a while will cause pneumonia in babies, and it's a preventable, entirely preventable problem if we give people antibiotics. So we test for that at 36 weeks. Okay. And then it's usually down the home stretch that we're really doing the, the most troubleshooting um, trying to trying to decide, you know, when somebody should come in and have a baby. Um, there's a window of about 39 to 41 weeks that's ideal. Um, if you think of your due date as the bullseye in the middle of a, of a dartboard, <laughs> um, you're playing darts, you're always shooting for that thing, you hardly ever hit it. If you get it on the dartboard, we're good. If you think about the dartboard as being basically 38, 39 weeks to 41, 42 weeks, uh, that's, that's sort of what we're shooting for most of the time with some, some rare exceptions. Dr. Eric Seward, OBGYN at Woodlawn Hospital. As we continue this next month, and by the way, for our listeners' benefit, and uh, hopefully Scott can go along with us, we're tentatively scheduling this for December the 18th, which would be the third Monday in the month of December due to the Christmas holiday. But as we continue this, I'd be interested in when you have the discussion with the, the, the mother about whether it's going to be a natural childbirth or whether it's going to be a C-section childbirth, and maybe yeah. what goes into those types of Considerations. Oh, that's a that's a great question, and um, I, I, the short answer is I prefer mo most of them to be natural if I can if I can help it. Um, there's partly a, a medical reason for that in the sense that babies that are born naturally tend to do a little better immediately, um, assuming things are easy. Um, they usually is a much easier thing to recover from for the mom. Uh, most moms uh, come into the child uh, bearing process wanting to have a normal delivery, not not right. necessarily wanting to have a C-section. Now we do have there's some caveats to that though, and when you have a smaller hospital, um, and and Woodlawn would count as that, you can't have. A 24-hour anesthesiologist setting in the OB department. Um, we just we don't have the right. volume for that. Um, so when you come to a hospital, your OB doc, your pediatrician, and your anesthesiologist are probably at best sleeping in some back room somewhere, but most likely at home <laughs> or in their office or at their kid's little league game or something right. like that. And so when when the the event happens usually there's some phone calls that get made and people have to come in and with that in mind um, doing VBAX which is vaginal births after cesarean has a, a certain risk and most small hospitals um, in the state of Indiana anyway have sort of decided to steer clear of that so once a person's had a c-section we're leaning towards repeating a c-section and in in that case it's Planned. We usually shoot for 39 weeks. It's the uh, the first time that we can do it safely, assuming we have some good dates, uh, and that's that's basically our 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 goal. There aren't very many. Once in a blue moon, I'll have either somebody with a very abnormal pelvis or a very ginormous baby, and um, in in those cases, it's usually a frank discussion uh, and a decision that's sort of uh, agreed upon between patients and, sure. and myself um, it, it, when somebody's got an untried pelvis or if they've had two or three babies before most of the time uh, we're going to give them a shot at delivering normally um, sometimes babies don't point the right direction when that happens we have to we have to make do um, if it's a foot or a hand or, or something else uh, come in first then there's no choice we have to do a c-section if it's a if there's time if we catch on to it soon enough sometimes we can flip a baby over and try to prevent a c-section but if in most cases uh, if babies are mal presenting then we don't have a whole lot of a choice we have to do c-sections in those cases um, but that's that's something okay. that we address when we have to and it's really about I, I always point out to my patients that I've got three goals for everybody. First goal is I want them to be safe. 
Um, I want at the end of the day, I want my moms to be healthy. And a second, you know, equally important goal, both of these are paramount, um, would be to give them a, a healthy baby if sure. there's any possible way to do that. Sure. Um, and so those two things trump everything else. The third thing is to do it all with grace and style. <laughs> and I, I'll, I'll say this, as I said a, a hundred times before, um, for me, that's easy. <laughs> if things right. happen easy, then for the most part, thing one and thing two uh, get accomplished. It, for moms, it's kind of interesting. Uh, moms come in, and, and I'll, I'll walk into one room. This might happen today. I'll walk into <laughs> one room, and, and, and the patient may say, don't even mention the word epidural. I don't want to hear that <laughs> word. If you say that word, I'll slap you. you know? <laughs> and uh, the, the very next room, I may walk in, and somebody may ask me, can I have my epidural now? And uh, it, it's tricky because um, a lot of our moms have their, their preset ideas sure. of sure what they, they want. And sometimes it's based on what happened to them before. Sometimes it's a best friend. Uh, sometimes it's it's media. Who knows? Um, but we have... We have a lot of different approaches, and, and we try to keep our moms within reason, try to keep them as happy as possible. There's a lot of different ways, as they say, to skin a cat. Um, from from my point of view, as long as it's easy, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> How do people get a hold of you, Dr. Seward? Oh, we, we have, um, we have, we're in the hospital, um, the Woodlawn um, Medical Clinic okay. that's attached to the hospital. Um, I'm on the website. Um, I, I think you can you can get the number. I don't know it off the top of my head okay. or I can say it. That's um, fine. But we have, um, we have, you can call up to the office. You can get through almost always either to um, the, the front desk people or to Amy, who's my medical assistant. Um, and we get people in pretty quick, okay. uh, especially with pregnancy. We try not to dilly-dally much with that. Um, we, we always leave a few slots in there for our pregnant patients so we can just work them in if we need to. Um, I also like to mention that a lot of people, I think you go to the doctor and one of the first things, this is true for me too, one of the first things you think of is dollar signs. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when it comes to pregnancy, uh, first of all, there's there's a pretty good safety net for most of our, our pregnant patients. Um, and, and this is true all across the United States. There there are Medicaid and other resources available for pregnancy. But we do this as sort of a block billing. And I like to point out that if a person normally comes and sees me 13 times, but in this particular pregnancy, they come in and see me 23 times, and this happens once in a while, uh, they're getting a really good deal. Um, the, the idea is that the whole thing, the, the pregnancy, the delivery, the whole thing is, okay. is a block. And so we like to get people in early and often, and the more often they come and see us for these things, the better deal they're getting. Dr. Eric Seward, thanks very much. Good information today. We appreciate your time. Yeah, Thank my you. My pleasure.